Hello, I'm Sumit Mistri. I specialize in oil painting medium. I really admire the classical realism style of painting, the same style which was used by 19th century artists. So let's just start. First, I'll start with the materials that I'm going to use, okay? So we have 8 cross 10 inch stretched canvas by Camel. Then we have a mixed set of brushes by Camel. Then we have oil paints and we have mediums in which we have turpentine and linseed oil. We'll use turpentine to wash our brushes and to thin down our oil paint. So I'll explain. Basically, we'll be working in multiple layers. So in the initial few layers, we want our consistency of the paint like water. We want to paint to move around quickly. Also, we want to dry it faster compared to the next layer that we are going to add. And in the next layer, we'll keep on increasing the oil content using linseed oil. Then I have a container for storing my turpentine. I just pour it into it. It's a distilled turpentine by Camel. The normal turpentine that we get in hardware stores, it has a kind of smell to it and it becomes really hard to work in a process. So I'll really recommend you to start using a distilled turpentine by Camel. Then I mentioned we have oil paints. We'll be using titanium white and we are going to need very large amount of it compared to the other colors. Then we have lemon yellow. Then we have chrome yellow. Then we have yellow ochre. Then we have burnt sienna. Then we'll need crimson lake. Then we have cobalt blue. Then we have ivory black. We'll be painting this spear painting. Majority of the hue is towards sap green. So I'm just putting sap green over here. So let's just start. As you can see, this is a stretched canvas. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I just pick up the largest brush that, that is available here and we are going to tone this canvas. So there are two reasons to tone your canvases. I'm just taking turpentine so that it runs like water and I'm adding burnt sienna and little bit of cobalt blue. So there are two reasons as I mentioned. First one is, when we are starting to paint, we are very hesitant to put our first brush stroke. We fear that we may ruin this beautiful canvas. I don't want you to have this fear. So we are just going to fill this canvas. I want you to cover whole canvas. Now we want to remove the excessive pigment that is present now uh, currently at the canvas. For that, we'll just add more turpentine into this. And I'll just remove it using a tissue paper. So now that we have removed most of our pigment round brush from camel it is size 4 90 percent of our entire work will be done using this brush so now we want to make outline of the spear to sketch we are going to use burnt sienna and cobalt blue what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a grid here so that it will be very helpful to compose this spear into our center so i'll just going to mark a midpoint of this side and this side We'll just have to match those two points. And I'm going to do same in our canvas. Again, if you make any mistake while sketching, you can just use turpentine to sculpt that mistake and move it down. As I can observe, I have put this line little bit above where it should be. So I'm just sculpting that mistake. We are just going to quickly sketch the outline of our pair and no need to be accurate while putting those marks. Don't need to be perfect here. We have completed our outline and the query was, can we remove this? Yes, we can. Just go ahead and wash your brush with turpentine and just sculpt this down. You can make mistakes n number of times and correct your mistakes. That's the beauty of oil paint. Likewise, we can remove our grids. Let's sketch the stem of our fruit. So now we'll just try to get into the details of the painting. I'm, I'm adding more paint and to stand out this sketch, I'm adding cobalt blue and get more visible to the eye. Put the outlines of this shadow.
I am just going to put outline of our form shadow. Now, and I think we have we are done with our outline part. Let us start with our actual painting. So, we are going to start with our shadow region and then we will move to the light region. So, let us start for shadows I will need sap green in that I am going to add cobalt blue and burnt sienna will give you lower value earth tone and when you mix this it will give you the shadow color. We need to lower the value more. So, I am just going to add burnt sienna and cobalt blue and just little bit of ivory black. I am going to add little bit of turpentine because we are on currently on layer number 1. On layer number 2 and layer number 3 we would not be using turpentine this much ok let us start. Now, as the form is turning our chroma is increasing that is we need to add more sap green and we need to lighten this value. So, to, to do that you can add yellow to it and you can say the chroma has increased and I am just going to put it here. Let us lighten our value by using yellow little bit of flake white and little bit of burnt sienna. As you can see here I am how I am mixing colors. I am mixing colors as, as this form is turning. So, I am for this form to turn like this way I am mixing colors in such direction only. If you can observe I am also adding turpentine just to keep this layer thinner. I am just massing in the average green color that we have here. Now, this form is turning like this as it is turning the value is increasing chroma remains the same, but the value is increasing. So, for that I will just add flake white into this little bit of yellow portion and going to little desaturate it little bit. Now, I am going to put the highlight mark here our current mixture I am going to add flake white and little bit of lemon yellow little bit of flake white and going to put it over here. Similarly, as we did here we have to we will have to do here. Now, let us complete this part which is lighten up by our secondary light source secondary bouncing light I am just going to use this mixture only. Now, I want the temperature of this shadow to turn towards warmer side. So, in this color I am going to add yellow ochre little bit more sap green and to desaturate this again burnt sienna cobalt blue. Let us mass in our shadow region to keep it simple I am just going to mass in using burnt sienna only. Now, we are done with our blocking stage. Now, at the background I want to paint a cool color so that warmer colors over here will stand out. For that I am going to mix a subtle violet color for that we will need flake white cobalt blue and crimson lake just mixing these and as you can see we will get this very subtle variant of violet color. Now, to be quick while applying this I am just going to use this palette knife you can use any flat brush you have at your place. I am just going to mass in this color. I am going to keep little bit color for later use and I am going to clean my palette again. We will be adding our next layers let us just paint our lower portion of the background for that I am going to add 
burnt sienna a little bit again flake white let's make this i think this looks good adding little bit of oil just a drop or two mixing it together this can work let's just mask in our background in the lower region now we are switching into the refining stage i just put these colors over here if you are using linseed oil there's a safety practices that you should follow linseed oil is combustible in nature that means if you are wiping your linseed oil with tissue papers like this and you are putting those into your dustbins and if that dustbin has enough oxygen availability it can catch fire just be careful about where you are littering your leftover tissue papers let's just start with our darker portion i am using sap green cobalt blue and burnt sienna we need to darken this more to reduce value i am adding ivory black little bit of burnt sienna so the chroma remains and sap green i am also correcting this edge as i am proceeding we need to correct this edge now there will be a secondary light lightening up this but we we want to transition into the light so i am just going to desaturate this little bit and ramp up chroma ramp up value by adding flake white and put it here and as you can see this automatically transitions you don't need to do much when we want to blend with oil paints ramping up value ramping up chroma with lemon yellow now i'm going to the half tone area this will have the highest chroma but the value will be in mid region for that i'm using sap green yellow ochre ramping up chroma with lemon yellow little bit desaturation using burnt sienna and cobalt blue see carefully that i am not using turpentine anymore i'm just going to transition into the earlier paint that we have placed now i'll be transitioning into the half tone area little bit of desaturation will work this is good for our half tone area i'm just going to quickly mask in the entire half tone region as i'm going i am trying to refine all the edges because this will be our last layer as we have very limited time with us now we need to get this part right we need to lower our value and chroma just placing this here now i'm just going to drag this color so that it blends with our earlier layers i think this one works let's work in our lightest light region for that i'm using more flake white and lemon yellow not this much saturated we can always desaturate it using burnt sienna and cobalt blue placing it here yeah this looks perfect just blending the earlier brush strokes even in the lower part for cast shadow part in shadow region i'm going to use cobalt blue little bit of sap green and crimson lake let's make this i'm just going to mask in our shadow part as we are going away from this form because of reflected light this shadow part will also get lighter and lighter i'm trying to have chroma towards violet side because of our background it will be more lighter now as i said earlier this will have a smooth shadow edge as this is far from our form but as we get closer to the form we'll have a sharp shadow edge now let's work on our stem region for that we'll be using burnt sienna cobalt blue and little bit of crimson and ivory black this will be our darker part and for lighter part where the light is hitting there will be use burnt sienna little bit of chrome yellow and flake white let's mask in this i'm just adding the shadow part if you're following this along and you have completed this painting along with me post that on instagram and tag kokyo gamlin and me on instagram i would love to see your progress and you can tag me as inceptor arts and kokyo gamlin so that's it for this workshop everyone we'll meet again for sure thank you so much for joining